Well, I've got lots of plans for my fall gardening and spring gardening coming up next year. And I'm going to be expanding and doing some in-ground gardening. And so I was excited to be able to start some of that preparation this weekend. But it's raining. It's raining and it's wet. It's just not a good time to be working outside. But I decided I needed to do something. I need some more tools to be working in the garden. I need some things to help me prepare. And I don't have them. So I decided to use my time in this rainy weekend to do something to prepare by making a garden fork. I need a garden fork to help me break the ground and prepare uh, an in-ground bed. I've got lots of good soil and mulch and compost to put in it, but before I do that, I wanna break up the solid ground that's under. It's very hard, it's very full of clay, and I think it would be better if I could break it up first and then put down. Now, my neighbor has a tractor, and he said that he would till it for me, and I might do that, but I like to be self-sufficient. So even though my neighbor has offered help, you know, he's working right now. He's not available right now. So um, there's some things that I can do by hand. If only I had a digging fork and I didn't have one. I looked at several stores, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, Ace Hardware, and they didn't have what I was looking for. Lowe's did have some kind of a digging fork, but it wasn't big enough. It wasn't what I wanted. So I said, hey, I believe I could make one myself. And so that's what I did. This is my digging fork, and I'm going to show you how I made it myself from rebar, some pipes, and an old broken handle that I had on hand. Now, the digging fork at Lowe's that really wasn't what I wanted cost $35. This digging fork that I made cost me nothing. It was all made from materials I had on hand, and it really only took about four hours to make, and I was making it up as I was going and I was videotaping it too. So I think if I were to do it again, I could make it a lot quicker. But anyway, it was fun to make and I thought you might wanna watch as I make it. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video today. I really like to use rebar for things. It's very cheap and I just keep a little bit extra on hand because it seems like every time I need it, there it is. So I'm going to use rebar uh, for the tines of my digging fork. So I'm using an acetylene torch here to cut the tines. Yeah, I think it was 28 inches and that's enough to bend them around and make two tines each. And that will make for a fork with four tines. I decided that I would go ahead and do a little basic blacksmithing. Um, I could have just ground these tines down to make the points on the ends, but that seems like it takes a long time and I hadn't done any blacksmithing in a while, so I decided I'd heat these, the ends of this rebar up and then use a hammer to pound them out and kind of make a taper. Won't get completely to a point, I'll finish it with the grinder, but this allows me to make the, the um, time smooth and more tapered and so uh, I'm using this homemade railroad anvil, railroad track anvil that I got, I inherited from my grandpa and this hammer is also a hammer that I inherited from my grandpa. And so we'll just heat this up with the acetylene torch and then pound it out and it'll be, help the uh, tines to become narrower and narrower toward the end. And then um, when I get done doing that, I will grind them to a fine point with the um, bench grinder. So I'm not a blacksmith, but uh, it's just some skills that I've been picking up. Um, and here's the thing, you don't have to be an expert at what you do. You just have to get out there and do it. And you learn while you do it, you develop skills while you do it, 
and you get better and better and better. So now that I've uh, made the tapers, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the point with the grinding wheel. So I'll grind off both pins and make a nice point. And you can see here, that'll help that tine to poke into the ground really easy. So I've got a point on each pin. Now I need to do some bending. So I'm going to heat this rebar up right where I want it to bend. And it's amazing to me how something so rigid as steel, uh, when you heat it up and get it glowing, it bends like Play-Doh. So um, this ought to be able to bend once I get it bent. Now I'm going to use the anvil to kind of help bend it. But it's amazing how easy it is. Now, I'm going to have to get these bins to be perfectly 90 degrees, but I can use the anvil to be a, 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 a template to make the bins and make sure that they're square. Now, but first, let me go ahead and get this other been made and we'll see how it all starts to come together. It's amazing how fast that acetylene torch can heat up that steel rebar. Now, now that I've got a basic start to the bin, let's go ahead and reheat this corner and I'll get it squared off using the anvil as a guide. See? Square. Now, Let's get the other end. Where? Looks good. This digging fork is made completely from scrap material that I had laying around. A few years ago, a friend of mine gave me some scrap metal and I just keep it on hand and use it whenever I need it. Part of it includes this angle iron, so I cut a piece of it and I'm going to use that to be part of that head of the digging fork. So all I got to do is weld these tines this angle iron to make the head. Can you imagine it? Now all this metal is kind of rusty so in order for it to weld properly I've got to get that rust knocked off of it. So I'll use a wire brush wheel just to kind of polish off the rust and corrosion on any of the metal surfaces that are going to be welded. Same thing for the angle iron. I'm going to polish off any burrs on the edges and make it smooth and then get rid of any rust that's on there so that it can get a good weld. Now, how am I going to attach the handle to the fork? I've got an old piece of trampoline pipe. Just got to cut it to the right size, and that will be just the right diameter to hold the handle. In order to attach the pipe to the fork, I'm going to have to make a hole. 
So we'll mark off the outline of the pipe with a marker, and then we'll use an angle grinder with a cutting wheel to cut out the hole. Now we'll use a hammer to knock out that piece. Now the pipe is going to need a slit. It fits the handle pretty good, but it's just a little bit bigger than the handle. So we'll cut a slit. That way, when we add the screw that's going to hold it to the handle, it will make a nice uh, grip on the handle. It'll kind of crimp around the wooden handle. Now we've got to get the pipe through the hole and get it in position and then weld it together. Now, I'm not a professional welder. I'm not a professional anything except for a professional packer. But that doesn't mean I can't do it. It may be an ugly weld, but it's a weld that's going to hold it together. So, it's always fascinating to me the different ways that you can build something. You just get out there and you try. Do your best. Uh, you can do all kinds of neat stuff. Now it's time to weld the tines to the pipe and the angle iron to make a fork head. So we'll get the tines in position and we'll do some more ugly welding and get everything to hold together nice and tight and firm. We don't want it to be strong because it's going to have to resist the pressure of being pushed into the ground and prying up the dirt. So we want it to be good and strong. But I think it will. The welds will be ugly because I'm an ugly welder, but they'll be good and strong. There were a couple sharp edges on that angle iron. I didn't really like it because I was afraid it might catch something or gouge something or poke something, so I just decided to use my angle grinder to grind those off and make them round. Not too bad. Notice how this shovel has a curve to it to help it work better. My fork is straight, so I'm going to bend some curve into this to help it work a little bit better. Once again, we'll go to the acetylene torch. Man, this tool comes in handy in so many different ways. Just sort of freehanding all of this bending. Just kind of imagining the way that I thought that it should work. After getting it done and adjusting it, thinking about it after the fact, I thought, well, this could have been a lot easier. Uh, I could have just made a simpler curve. But, or I could have used some kind of a template. But if I ever do it again, that's probably what I'll do. But for now, this first time, just did all the bending by hand using a hammer to sort of move things into place and getting it into the general shape that I thought it should be.
think that's just about got it. Give it a quick check. And I wonder if it will work. So I'll take it outside. The handle's not attached. It's just pushed into the pipe. But I want to see, is it ergonomic? Does it really work? Seems to. Now, for some reason, the video footage I had where I drilled the hole through the pipe and the handle got messed up. So I can't show you that. But here's a look after the fact. I drilled a hole through it and used a screw that I had in my screw box just to cinch it all up nice and tight on the wooden handle. It works really good, looks really good, and feels really firm. No play whatsoever. Now I want to paint this and make it look nice, but it's got rust and smut and all kinds of things on it that's going to make it hard to paint. So first I'm going to clean it off with a little bit of acetone just to prepare it to receive the paint. I like using acetone because it kind of gets off grease and stuff like that and rust and dust and all that, but it also evaporates really fast. So you can clean everything off, let it set for just a, a, a minute or so, and then all the acetone evaporates and there's nothing left. I thought about painting different colors, green or red or blue, but decided just to go with black. That way, if any of the black paint scrapes off as it goes through the dirt, um, it'll, it won't really show up that much. But after a few coats of paint, it uh, looks pretty good. Now let's do some finish work on the handle. As I was driving to pick up my daughter from school and was thinking about it, I said, you know what? This digger needs a name. And so I thought about what should I name it? And the name that came to me that just seemed to fit is Daddy's Digger. You know, as Christians, we're called to share our testimony with people everywhere. We're to be Jesus' witnesses. And some people are intimidated by that, and they think, well, I don't know the Bible well enough, or I'm not a good enough of a Christian, or I don't know doctrine and can't explain things. That doesn't matter. You don't have to be an expert. All you have to do is have a relationship with Jesus and tell people what a difference that makes for you. It's just simply sharing your own personal experience. And guess what? Nobody is a better expert at your own life than you are. You're the only one that can tell people exactly what you feel and what a difference following Jesus makes for you. And so we just have to get out there and do it. And it's kind of like a lot of things in life. I don't, I'm not a blacksmith. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not a gardener. And I could say, well, I'm not going to do any of those things because I'm not an expert at it. Well, that doesn't work. Then nothing happens. Nothing gets done. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to get out there and do your best and try. And what you'll find is that a lot of times you'll succeed a lot better than you expected. And you'll get better also. You may never be a master gardener or a master carpenter or a master blacksmith, but that doesn't matter. All that matters is that you did something. You had fun while you were doing it, you learned along the way, and you ended up with something useful, like I did today, ending up with a useful digging fork. And as soon as the rain clears out and I get a little time, I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna dig up that garden bed and get it ready and plant some cover crops on it so that it'll be ready to plant, I don't know, corn, um, beans, whatever, next year in the springtime. So anyway, thank you for watching the video today. I hope you always know God loves you and I love you too. I hope you have a great day. Get out there, do something fun and productive.